Hello everyone, welcome to the Security Dev Room. Um, we are now uh, going to have a talk by Andre, who's going to talk about uh, systems configuration management system foreman and with OpenSCAP. Please welcome Andre. Hi, I hope the sound is okay. So today I'll be talking about foreman auditing and how you can do that with foreman at o and OpenSCAP. So in the beginning, I'd like to talk a little bit about our motivation, why we would want to do any of this. Then I'll talk about OpenSCAP and Foreman, because I don't know if you know these projects. Maybe you do, and maybe you use them. If that's the case, then feel free to sleep. And in the end, I'll show you how these two sort of come together and what you can do with it. Uh, OK, so a brief info about me. I work at Red Hat. I'm one of the Foreman OpenSCAP maintainers. That's about it, really. Uh, so why compliance? Well, if you have been without any kind of a security incident in the past, then that's great. And I hope it will last in the future. But uh, the future is always uncertain. And there's always a chance that there is something uh, bad lurking just behind the corner. And for me, personally, I don't think I will be targeted because I'm not really a person of interest to anyone. I don't have any business critical information. I don't have anything related to national security, and I definitely don't have it in my private email account. But if you're a company or a government, then you're much more visible and you're much more uh, likely to be a target. Um, and maybe people will try to take over your service and get to your data, and maybe they won't. But that's not something you really want to leave to a chance entirely. So one of the things that you can actually do is to set up a policy, a compliance policy, and then try to force yourselves and your users to comply with it. And uh, the policy tries to mitigate the risks that things go really bad. And uh, if you decide to go this way, then uh, SCAP uh, is actually something uh, that can help you with it. Uh, it's security content automation protocol. And it was designed uh, for vulnerability management and to automate the whole process. And OpenSCAP is open source implementation of that. It's NIST certified. Uh, NIST is a national Institute's institute of standards and technology. It's a part of US Department of Commerce. So if you tell your auditors that you use a tool that has a government uh, stamp on it, I'm sure they'll be quite happy. And OpenSCAP uh, provides you with a bunch of tools. Basically, the first one here is a command line scanner. Then you have OpenSCAP daemon that surprisingly runs as a daemon. Uh, down here is Anaconda plugin uh, that you can use with Anaconda installer and OpenSCAP Workbench that provides you with graphical interface. You can run scans locally and many more things. Okay, uh, moving on to Foreman. Uh, basically, Foreman in a nutshell does three things uh, provisioning, configuration, and monitoring. And I'll stop to talk a little bit about each of these. Uh, provisioning, uh, so foreman provisions con containers, VMs or bare metal. I've heard uh, this one story that someone was actually doing experiments and trying to provision cash registers in a supermarket, but for some reason it didn't work. The hardware just couldn't handle it somehow, but still it got my attention. Uh, basically, Foreman works with uh, most of the uh, well-known computer resource providers like VMware, uh, EC2, Amazon, you name it. Uh, if you think we're missing something, then let us know and maybe we'll do something about it. Uh, and if not, you can always write your own plugin and support it yourselves. Uh, some of these are already supported through plugins, so you can use that as an inspiration. Uh, and Foreman does both network and image-based provisioning. OK, configuration. Uh, Puppet is kind of a first-class citizen for Foreman uh, because I've heard this rumor that Foreman started as a UI for Puppet, but that was a long time ago, and Foreman evolved a lot since then. Uh, you can, uh, if you don't like Puppet for some reason, you can use also Ansible or Chef or Salt. Uh, it's entirely up to you. 
Okay, uh, monitoring. Basically, foreman uh, receives uh, data from host and tries to display it uh, to users in a meaningful way. Uh, that's your graphs, your reports, your trends, and so on. Uh, basically, in this area also fall the OpenSCAP reports that we'll see in just a minute. And right now, I think it's kind of obvious where we are headed. We have foreman that can set up your machines, and we have OpenSCAP that can monitor them for compliance policy violations. So people said, hey, let's get these two together. And they did and created Foreman OpenSCAP, uh, which is a Foreman plugin. And now I'll try to show you what, could, what you can do with it. Uh, basically, yeah, you could see my you could see my Foreman now. Maybe I'll try to a little bit zoom out. Or maybe maybe not. Okay. Uh, Basically, I have uh, two hosts here. The third one is actually my foreman server. And if you, uh, if you are looking for the OpenSCAP related stuff, ooh, okay. <laughs> it's down here. Okay, this is not good. I'll try, to, I'll try to zoom out. Yeah. yeah, that's much better. Okay, uh, down here on the host. Uh, and first thing, we'll take a look at, look at our SCAP contents. Basically, uh, SCAP content is an XML file uh, that has a specific format. Uh, and uh, you, uh, you can see I have already a couple of these here. Uh, these come uh, from uh, one of the OpenSCAP packages and they get uploaded uh, once you install the plugin, so you get them right out of the box. So we can always, but you can always upload a new one if you have one. So let's do, them, do that right now. We'll actually choose the file, right, and submit. Maybe let's do this. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, so I uploaded my SCAP content and I'll move on to the policies. And policy is actually something that gets uh, applied directly to your host. So let's create a new policy. Okay. Let's name it. Again, description is optional, so let's skip it. And uh, here we can choose SCAP content, so I'll choose the one that I've uh, just uploaded. And I have to choose a profile, and the profile is within the actual file that I have uploaded. And uh, it uh, basically says what gets checked during the scan. So there's only this one in the file, so I'll select that and move on. And I, now I ch uh, will choose my schedule, how often my policy runs. Uh, you can choose from weekly, monthly, custom. So let's say I want monthly and I want every fourth day in the month. And I'll move on. And the last thing I'll, uh, I'll do is to choose my host group. And basically I'm done. So what exactly is a host group? Well. Basically, if you're creating lots of hosts, uh, these hosts ha usually have something in common. And uh, you don't want to uh, do it uh, each time from scratch. So as you can see, this is uh, the place where I can create a new, uh, new host. And basically, it has uh, lots of tabs and lots of fields to be filled in. And I don't really want to do that each time. So I have my host group, and I choose my host group. And now I choose my uh, choose where to deploy. I want to deploy on Libbert, and basically I'm done because all this gets populated from the information. Uh, uh, but this gets populated from the host group. So if I now, if I now click submit, I can create a new host, and it would start to provision, um, uh, assuming that I have configured everything correctly. But I don't really want to create a new host now. Uh, so let's go back. And that's why you have uh, the uh, host group selector in your policy in the policy wizard, 
because that policy gets uh, applied to all, all hosts that have that host group. Okay, so now you have uh, set up your policy and now you have your host and you have applied the policy to your host. And uh, so what next? Uh, well, next thing you can do is to sit back and wait for your report to come in uh, based on the schedule that you have selected in your policy. But you can always do that. You can always run scan manually and you would do that by using SSH and you would SSH into your host and then you would type in command to run a scan and it would run a scan and it would send it to Foreman. But if you have a remote execution plugin for Foreman, you can do it, uh, do it from UI. So I have that already set up. I have a host with my policy and now uh, I have a prepared job that can uh, basically uh, run a scan. So I'll do that now. I'll select my host, the one that is online and I'll select run job. Uh, basically job category OpenSCAP. I want start OpenSCAP scan. I want to apply it to my Danish queen host and execute now. So this should take only a few seconds. Um, it, seems, it seems like it started. And this is the command that gets executed and it's, it's done. And it's a success. So let's check out our reports. So I go to reports and I see I have a new report here that landed just a minute ago. And from the overview, I can see that it's failing. So let's take a look at the details. Uh, so here, you can actually see uh, all the rules that were checked and what the result of the actual check was. And you have uh, the metrics and so this sort of breakdown, how many rules failed and how many passed. And uh, if you, I go to view full report, uh, then this is actually what OpenSCAP sends with some styling. And you have, again, lots of info here, uh, what rules failed, how, uh, how many of them passed and so on and so on. And one uh, interesting thing is uh, down here, if I go to the details of the actual rule and scroll down, I have a remediation script. And if you run this on your host, you should get the, uh, uh, this rule fixed. So let's, um, let's do that now and let's try to fix one of these rules. So uh, again, I have prepared a job with this script. So I will run it to, uh, using remote execution and try to get it fixed. So again, I go to all my hosts. Uh, I have host selected, so select action, run job. Uh, again, category open SCAP. And this time I want fix Java config there. Uh, so let's execute. Seems like a success. And yeah, all I have to do is actually rerun the scan. So I will, oh. I'll rerun the scan once I find the correct page. So again, run a job. And uh, open a scap, start open a scap scan, submit. Success. Okay, again, let's take a look at the reports. And as you can see, I have a new report and it has one, uh, one rule that has pa uh, that, is, uh, that is okay. And the remaining uh, needs to be fixed. Uh, so basically this is uh, how you can check the compliance with uh, OpenSCAP. And I'll just get, get back to my slides. Uh, future features. Basically, uh, one of the features that was done recently is tailoring files. Uh, this allows you to uh, this allows you to modify your profiles and modify your policies. It's done. It will be in the next release of uh, Foreman OpenSCAP. Uh, then we have planned running the remedi remediation using and using remote execution, like we would uh, we would parse the remediation step remediation scripts from. Uh, from the report that came in and was failing and you would have this one sort of button that you would just push and poof, everything would be fixed. And we are always happy uh, to hear your suggestions. So basically that's all I have. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate. Okay, I... First thing, thanks, Andre.
So questions? First thing my boss will ask, does it apply to Windows as well? Well, basically, uh, uh, we are limited by, uh, by OpenScap. What uh, OpenScap supports and what OpenScap scans, uh, we, can, we, uh, we, can, we can basically use it. Uh, I don't think OpenScap uh, supports Windows. So, Raise your hand if you want to ask a question. There is one over here and one over there. Hi. How do you extend the SCAP rule, f rule set to include your own checks? Uh, basically, you can use uh, OpenSCAP Workbench uh, to, modif uh, to create the tailoring files. That's the new feature that will be introduced. And uh, basically, people, uh, uh, people write their own uh, SCAP contents themselves. Uh, if you, uh, it has a specific formats that you have uh, to stick to, and that's uh, that's how you uh, basically create your own checks and uh, decide what gets checked during the scan. Hi. Uh, yeah. There. Um, given that you said that Puppet is a first-class citizen with Foreman, is this how um, OpenSCAP runs on the hosts and? If yes, can it run with anything other than Puppet? Puppet, and if no, can it run with Puppet? Uh, yeah, basically we use Puppet to deliver the client that runs the scan to the host. Uh, right now, it uh, it it can right now it can't really um, run without Puppet. At least we haven't tried to uh, because it's kind of tied uh, tied together. And there are, uh, there are future plans as we progress with Ansible and other config management tools also to uh, make it more available to other config tools uh, to work with. Do you want to follow up? Or? Um, no, there's no point. Okay. Uh, follow up on the first question. Uh, you mentioned something about uh, OpenSCAP not supporting Windows. Um, there are SCAP. Uh, templates supporting Windows, oh. and you can also, for example, uh, use uh, Puppet to, to a Windows machine. So why would there be any limitations in OpenSCAP? Okay, so I, I didn't know there were uh, there were really policies for Windows. So my bad. So and for Cisco devices and all kinds of other. If if there are policies and if uh, OpenSCAP can actually scan a Windows machine, then we can support yeah, that. Yeah, just uh, questioning the OpenSCAP versus SCAP. Uh, format so for SCAP it's possible apparently. Yeah, uh, as I've said, we are we are using OpenSCAP and what okay. OpenSCAP ca is able to to do, the uh, we can support. Okay. So, but thanks for more questions. Hello, uh, I have a question about the output. Um, yeah. So if we have uh, some findings, say 10 findings for a server, um, some might be a false positive, but that scan might still apply to my other servers. Say if I have this false positive or this thing I accept at one server, for example, IP uh, forwarding on my VPN server, can I whitelist that or acknowledge that as a false positive for that specific server? Uh, well, for that, uh, I would I would recommend to basically tailor that policy and answer uh, uncheck the rule uh, basically remove the the rule from scan so you wouldn't have to deal deal with it if you if you if you think it's a false positive you can just make a separate policy for one uh, uh, yeah sorry. you can basically yeah. make a like. Uh, do you mean you have a... Uh, For example, I have a VPN server, okay. which allows IP forwarding, and mm -hmm. on all my other servers, I don't want that. Um, yeah, but, okay. yeah, okay, I get it. Uh, for you, uh, the new tailoring fa file feature will be very useful, right. because you can assi assign uh, a tailoring file to that policy and that, uh, that host, basically. Okay, there's one more. Yeah, maybe you can take this one first and then I'll a quick question. Actually, Foreman is the only tool to uh, allow the orchestration of uh, OpenSCAP, or, or is there is there any other tool that you you may use to to orchestrate or deliver all your agents? 
of OpenSCAP? Uh, it's not clear. <laughs> uh, it's not quite clear. Uh, basically, you can use uh, you can use OpenSCAP on its own yeah. without Foreman. And you have uh, some uh, user interface. Uh, uh, you have uh, some kind of user interface, or? So. Uh, well, uh, the tools that I've shown here, basically, uh, these you can okay. use these on your own. And uh, the uh, OpenSCAP Workbench has a uh, graphical interface, and this is okay. basically only a command line scanner okay. that you can use on your own. We have plenty of time for questions, so raise your hand if you have any. We have one over here. You mentioned that there's a plugin for Anaconda for the installer. Yeah. Um, does, is there any plans to back? I know it's in seven. Is there any plans to backport that to six? I don't really know what uh, OpenSCAP guys have planned. Oh, this yeah. is the Red Hat team that's developing the Anaconda installation component. Yeah, but uh, I don't have what they have uh, what they have in, my, uh, in mind for the future. Uh, mm. It's. Uh, not really uh, on my radar, so I can't really tell. Uh, it's uh, it's the best thing for you would be to contact uh, the OpenSCAP guys and ask them di directly. Uh, no, it's actually the Red Hat guys that are developing the Anaconda installation wrapper to support the SCAP policies at install time. <laughs> Again, raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Um, hi, another question. Okay. Um, so this is about the execution um, bit. Um, is there a possibility in extending Foreman in such a way that when you have the remediation step, you can directly run it from the, you know, the bit that that um, suggests it? Uh, run it directly. How do you mean? So, you know, you have the remote execution engine with Foreman, yeah. and the OpenSCAP gives you a remediation step that says, run this for your hosts. Okay. Can you, um, is, is there a way of running it directly from that, um, fr from that um, input, uh, output? No, not yet. Not yet. But there are plans for that in the okay. future. Excellent. Raise your hand if you have another question. Yes, over there. <coughs> Two more minutes for questions. Um, is there a way in that UI, except for perhaps using using cron, to run these jobs uh, to to do these checks periodically, to maybe detect that there was an attack and something was changed in the meantime and get alerted about it? Uh. Well, automatically we use cron in the background, and so I can say are... run this every day or something. Yeah, you can run this every day. You can basically, if I go to the policy wizard, you can uh, you can you can choose a uh, you can choose how often you want your policy to run based on the cron line. Uh, if I okay, choose cool. custom, uh, you just specify a cron line and that's... Thank you very much. We have a final question here. Uh, is, it, is it possible to trigger from an outside application via API call uh, instead of scheduling a scan? And the second question, can, you, can we hook up like uh, for an event in an, in an external system after that? Uh, no, uh, right now uh, it's meant to run peri periodically and to check it in, at certain times. Uh, but maybe that, that could be a request for a feature. Okay. okay, let's thank Andre once again. And there will be.